Okay, everyone, we're going to go over the EKGs that we presented to you to complete for a crash 2017, and I thought I'd go through one at a time. You could find this PDF with all the stuff on it on the Entrada site. So let's go through it all real quick. So the first thing you want to do in this first EKG is come up with the rate. And the rate, if you look, remember you can, this is 10 seconds in an EKG. So if you multiply it by 6, you're going to get the rate. So we, I counted all the QRSs. Those represent a beat. Uh, so 22 times 6, I think, came out to 132. So the rate's 132. The next thing is the rhythm. And let's look up here for the rhythm, okay? And so the way you determine the rhythm is where is the signal starting from? Remember, our signal was the, the cardiac impulse will start in the SA node, go down these pathways to depolarize the atrium. And as the atria go, you get a P wave. Then it gets to the AV node, then it pauses there, and that's when you get that PR interval. Then it quickly goes down these bundle of hiss and left and right bundle branches, and that's when you get your QRS. And at the same time, the ventricles are going to depolarize. All right, and if you look here, what's going on? Let's take a look. I think I put it here. Uh, there is really no... Well, the first thing you want to look is that the that these RRs are irregular. The space between this is longer than these, and it's not the same as that, not the same as that. Each one is different, all right? So it's irregular. In fact, it's irregularly irregular. And then you look for all the QRSs. So there's a QRS, 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 QRS. And you look for the Ts. These are the Ts. And there are no P waves. And so if you have something that's irregularly irregular, and there are no P waves, and these things are narrow... Then you got to think, well, where is it coming from? The fact that the, thing, the QRS is narrow means it's using these superconducting fast fibers. That's why the QRS is narrow. So it's probably something coming from the atrium. And that irregularly irregular thing means it's coming from all over the atrium. And that's called atrial fibrillation. It's a disorganized rhythm coming out of the atria. So atrial fibrillation. All right, that's the rhythm. Next, uh, let's look at the axis. And the way you're going to look at the axis, if you look here, I've created a, uh, a graph here. And so... If you look at it, lead 1, positive 1 is here, positive F is this way. And we've separated this space into four areas, normal, right, extreme, and left. And you'll see that they're not really just all quadrants because normal kind of extends up here into this top quadrant as well, too. And it's the line perpendicular to, to lead 2 that separates them. So if lead 2 is positive, you're on that side of the line. And if lead 2 is negative, you're on that side of the line, okay? So let's look at then 1 and F. Those are the things we're going to use to look at. So F, you can see... We're going to look at the QRS, and it's positive in the 8 direction, negative down. And so you get 6 as a total if you subtract 8 from 2. All right, so we would plot down 6 here. And then we look at 1 next, okay? And 1 goes up here, and it's about 5 positive and 1 negative. Uh, and so we subtract, and we get 4 small boxes, so we go up 4. And so if you draw a vector, so you'd go down 6 and you over, go over 4, you're in the normal area. All right, so this is normal axis. Great. Now let's look at some other things here. We're next going to look at the intervals. And so there's really three intervals. We're going to look at the PR interval. Well, there is no P, so there's no PR. You're going to look at the Q, but the PR should be, uh, it should be between like 120 and 200. And if you remember, if you zoom in super close, I can't really see it here, but each one of these things is made up of, of small millimeter boxes with five uh, boxes, small boxes inside one big box. And each small box is equal to 40 milliseconds. So that's what one millimeter equals 40 milliseconds. And so now let's look at the QRS, and that's about one, maybe two, or three small boxes. So three times 40 is 120 milliseconds. And the QRS should be somewhere uh, less than 120 for it to be normal. Okay, and that's normal. We are normal. Now the QT, it's, it's, it's a little bit crazy the way that thing is calculated, so we're not going to go over that. I'm going to show you a shortcut. All right, because the, the, the QTC is corrected because you've got to correct it for rate, and it involves all sorts of square roots and cube roots and things like that. So what I'm, we, we do instead is you're going to use something called the bisection method, and what that means is you take one QRS and the QRS next, uh, next to it, and you draw a line in, in the middle, so we'll call that the halfway point. And if the T is on the right-hand side, the QTC is greater than 500. If the T is on the left-hand side, the QTC is less than 500 milliseconds. And when it's more than 500 milliseconds, that's when you may have a problem. And so you can see here, this QT looks kind of long, and that looks kind of long too. I mean, here, it's so far over, it almost looks like a P wave for this thing. So the QTC, greater than 500 milliseconds. Next thing we're going to look at, so that was intervals. Uh, we're going to look next at hypertrophy. And there's a formula, I forgot what the name of it is, but it'll be in your handout. You take the S in V1 and you add that to the R 
in B6. And if it's greater than 35, then you have left ventricular hypertrophy. And it isn't here. It's 10 plus 9, so it's 19. So there is no left ventricular hypertrophy. You can also look at atrial hypertrophy, but we're not going to look at that here. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at too is ST segments and T waves. But we're not going to look at that in this EKG. I'm just going to tell you they're pretty much normal here. Uh, and so we'll go over that in the next one. So what is our diagnosis here? Our diagnosis in this EKG is atrial fibrillation with a rapid rate. Remember, it was tachycardic. All right, and you've got to figure out what you want to do about that. Let's go to the next EKG. Okay, so this one... Uh, let's do it again. So the rate, if you do that same method, well, actually, we'll do a different method. You can find one that lines up on one of these lines, and then you can count how many big boxes till the next one. And with each one, you're going to divide uh, 300 by one box, by two box, by three boxes. So it goes 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, and I don't remember what comes next, 50, 42, something like that. So this one goes 300, 150, 100. So it's somewhere in between 150 and 100. It looks like it's closer to 150. So I'm going to say that it's perhaps 140. So the rate is 140. Let's look at the rhythm now. Again, remember, we want to know where in this system is the signal coming from. You're going to see a P if it comes from the SA node and comes down like this because it's going to then depolarize the atria. Do we see P waves? Let's see. Here we get this weird sawtooth pattern. Uh, if you look that, those are not P waves. This is called atrial flutter. It's a very common uh, uh, picture for that. So I actually drew a saw here. So the sawtooth pattern is indicative of atrial flutter. And what's going around, what's going on there is it's kind of circling around and around and around. And each time it fires one of these things, one of its signals into the AV node, and then you get a QRS. And sometimes the QRS, remember, it does a little delay in here. So sometimes it fires one in there and it's being delayed and as it's being delayed another one gets fired in there but not, both of them are not going to transmit through only one is so that's why you might get like a two to one pattern here like we get we got one two you know so look at one two qrs one two qrs so that's a two to one pattern there two to one ratio that we got there okay so that was our rhythm let's do our axis again f is negative one is positive so let's look at what happens when that we do that right here is our thing here again if F is positive, F is negative, and one is positive, we're in this area. Now we're in this crazy quadrant. So we've got to look at two. What side of two are we on? Are we on the positive side of this line, positive two, or the negative side? So we go to two, and two. Well, you know what? It's equally positive and negative. So what does that mean? Probably falls exactly on this line here. So I don't know what you call it. You could call it normal, or you could call it left. I'm going to call it left. I mean, I'm going to call it normal. All right. Let's now look. We did rate, rhythm, axis. Let's look at the intervals. Again, there are no P waves, so there's going to be no PR. Uh, the QRS we can look at, and that came out to about uh, one and a half small boxes, so about 60 milliseconds. That's pretty tight. It's probably uh, just because my eyes can't see it. It's probably a little bit more than that. Uh, and then the QRS, uh, the QTC again, remember we do our bisection method, and our T wave happens to fall on the proper side, so the QTC is less than 500. All right. Ventricular hypertrophy, we do it the same way. Again, the S in Q in V1, the S in V1 is 12, and then the R in uh, V6 is 18. So 12 plus 18 is less than 35, so no ventricular hypertrophy. We're not talking about atrial hypertrophy in this one. All right, we'll, you can learn that thing later. And again, I'm not going to talk about the ST waves and the, and the T wave, the ST segments and the T waves in this one. So what is the diagnosis here? It is atrial flutter with a two to, way, two to one conduction. Let's go to the next EKG, okay? All right, here we are, this is the next one. So obviously we can see this one's fast and if we do our, our little thing, 300 to 150, it's probably, uh, you know, it's somewhere between uh, one, you know, 300 and 150. So let's say maybe 160, I don't know. That's what I'm guessing there, all right? Okay, you can also do the counting method and see what that comes up, but that's a lot of things to count and I don't wanna do that. Next, rate, rhythm, what's the rhythm? Again, we look closely here. What do we see? This is the T wave. I don't see a P wave. And then the QRS, T wave, no P wave, QRS, T wave, no P wave. There's, there's no P waves. It's regular and it's tachycardic. So it's not that atrial fib, right? We don't see those flutter waves. So it's not uh, atrial flutter. So what's going on here? Well, this is something called SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. And that's when you get this circuit going on here. And it goes, you know, usually one limb of it goes through the AV node. And so then it'll fire. Yeah, you know, pretty quickly uh, through here. And then again, because you have a narrow QRS, you know that we're using 
the these bundles here and so that's why the qrs is normal we know that it's supraventricular because we have the narrow qrs and so we got some sort of av node thing here and this is going to be called svt rate rhythm axis intervals there's no p there's no prs okay qrs uh there's no p there's no pr qrs it's again if you measure it it's probably three small boxes so it's less than 120 it's normal and the qtc i did that here Right, we drew the line here, drew the line here, and drew this line down the middle. The T is on the left side, it's on the good side, so our QTC is less than 500. This is an estimate, okay? This is not a necessarily uh, going to get you an accurate number, but it's a quick and dirty way to do it. Usually, I'm going to just look at the EKG because the machine is going to calculate the QTC. Right, rhythm axis intervals. All right, you know what? ST segments, I'm not going to do in this one. Uh, and so what is this? This is called supraventricular tachycardia. We talked about that here. Let's go to the next EKG. All right, this one. Let's look again. Rate. The rate, we're going to go down here, 300, 150. Oh, it's about 150, right? We're, we're good there. What's the rhythm? Okay, the rhythm is, well, we know that it's fast, okay? Again, there's no P waves, so it's not coming from the sinus node and depolarizing the atria. The QRS is actually wide, okay? Because if you measure it, it's wide. Uh, so what's going on? There? There's a T wave there. So we got a wide, no P, QRS, and a T. No P, QRS, and a T. We got a wide QRS. That means it's probably starting somewhere in the, in the uh, ventricles because of the wide QRS. Because if we're not using this bundle branch, that's when we get a wide QRS. And so that's what's going on. So this is going to be something called ventricular tachycardia. Now let's look at the axis. Uh, okay, so we want to look at 1 and F, right? So 1 is positive. It's mostly negative if you take the sum, right? You, are, you go up 1 and you go down, negative 3, so the sum is negative 2. And then for AVF, it's up plus 6. Okay, so we've got negative 2 for 1. Uh, so we got right axis here, right? Because now we're in this quadrant. Negative 1 and positive F, we're in this right axis. The rate, rhythm, axis, intervals... Well, we did the inner, we, you know, we said there's no P, so we can't do that. The QRS is four boxes. And remember, each one of those boxes is 40 milliseconds. So 160 milliseconds, we wanted it to be less than 120. So this is considered wide. And the QTC, again, we do it this way with the bisecting method. And the T is on the good side. So our QTC, less than 500 milliseconds. All right, so this is going to be called ventricular tachycardia. It is starting here. All right, I'm going to skip the ST segments and the T waves. For this one let's go to the next one okay uh this one let's let's do it again let's do the rate first so we got 300 150 100 uh, you know it's just a little bit faster than 100 so maybe it's 105 let's say that okay what's the rhythm so let's look here oh here we got a p q r s t p q r s t so i think we have a sinus rhythm in this one so we know that it is starting here so we got a p as it depolarizes the atrium, it pauses, we get the PR interval. Then the QRS is narrow, so that's how we know that it's going through these bundles. And then the T is what happens, obviously, as the ventricles repolarize. So this is a sinus rhythm. Rate rhythm axis, what do we, uh, axis is, uh, okay, let's look here. The uh, AVF has a sum of positive one, and one has a sum of positive 12. So positive in both means we're in this quadrant. It means it's a normal axis, right? Positive 12, positive 1, normal axis. T waves, ST segments, let's skip that. Oh, but let's do our, uh, our hypertrophy. All right, this one's hard to see because this Q in here, it goes way down to here. Okay, that's pretty huge, right? That's pretty deep. That's going down 38 millimeters. Remember, each one of these uh, is, a, is 5, so you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 plus another 3, I guess, so that's 38. So that's already more than 35. And then you can take the R in V6, and that's going up a lot too, so maybe 2. So let's go 5, 10, 15, 20, plus that 2 is 22. So 38 plus 22, well, that's definitely more than 35, right? So we definitely have left ventricular hypertrophy. So what is the diagnosis here? It's normal sinus rhythm in a patient with left ventricular hypertrophy. Great, let's go to the next one. Obviously, I'm going through these very fast. You can pause this and watch it over again if you need to. Okay, so here we go again. What's the rate? The rate is 300, 150, 175, so a little bit slower than that, so let's say it's 70. What's the rhythm? 
we got a P, a QRS, and then a T, a P, a QRS, and a T. So it's sinus. What is the axis? Positive F, positive 1. So we know we're in the normal uh, quadrant. All right. <clears throat> Rate rhythm axis intervals. Let's see. What are the intervals? Here we go. The PR is about 5 millimeters times 40 milliseconds is 200 milliseconds. That's good. The QRS is about two small boxes times 40 milliseconds per millimeter is 80 milliseconds. Uh, that's good. And if we do our bisecting method here, uh, the QTC is less than 500 milliseconds. So that's good. Now, we got to do uh, talk a little bit about where the leads are. Okay, and so this is the heart. All right, and so this is the inferior part of the heart. This is the right side. This is the left side. And this is obviously the top. And I drew some blood vessels out here too. Okay, so where are the leads? So lead one tends to be played to look at this point of the heart and AVL are over, is over here. And so you want to think of these things as the high lateral leads because they're off to the side, right? And a little bit up because of the AVL. Um, two, F, and three are all pointing at the bottom. They're all looking at the bottom of the heart. Okay, AVR is looking kind of off here to the right side. Now, if you look at the, the uh, precordial leads, that's what these V1s are called, the V1 through V2. V1, V2 looks at the septum, V3, V4 is anterior, V5, V6 is again lateral. So now if you look at the EKG and you split them up into sections, you can do that. You can say, these are my high lateral leads here, 1 and L. These are my inferior leads, uh, 2, 3, and F. These are my septal leads. These are my anterior leads. I usually would just call these all anterior septal. And then these are your lateral leads, and I'll usually just call all these lateral as well. So now, what we're doing 